And I don't know if you know who Mia Khalifa is, but she's an ex-porn star, uh, now activist and actor. And I photographed her where it looks like she's like stuck behind the glass. The coolest part of this piece is that she ended up like buying back her own image from me. Hello LA! We're here talking and shopping in the City of Angels. Join me, Lauren Walker Lee, as we make our way through this vibrant metropolis, exploring the unique people and spaces who create the essence of LA style. LA sets the stage for bold experimentation, artistic flair, and sustainable sensibilities. Let's take a fashion forward trip through Los Angeles. Today I'm in Silver Lake spending time with artist and photographer Maya Fuhr, whose multifaceted work spans fashion, portraiture, and fine arts. With a focus on sex positivity, gender fluidity, and naturally fashion, her unmistakable style attracts clients like Coach, Marc Jacobs, Chanel, Vogue, and Interview Magazine, amongst many others. So let's go talking and shopping with the fantastic Maya Fuhr. Maya! So good to see nice you. Nice to see you. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks for coming. So you are now an LA lady. I am full Hollywood, baby. And you're loving it? Yeah, I love it so much. So you're living, working here, you're expanding your art, you're expanding your career. Yep. Um, I guess we should just start at the beginning and why don't you show me a bit of what's going on in the studio and how the fine art is going. Absolutely, yeah. So I moved to LA like two and a half years ago. So we're standing here in my garage studio. Great part of living in LA is that year round I can actually work in my garage and my car doesn't have to be in here. Um, so yeah, this is where all the magic happens. Like when I get to just be by myself and play and really find my own self-expression. Walk me through. Okay, well, you're gonna see a lot in here. Um, some of the work you'll see is from my first US solo exhibition mm -hmm. called Compersion. So you'll see some work that I actually just launched to the world. And then you'll see some pieces that are works mm -hmm. in progress and some you know, photography that I just took like last week that I'm, you know, inspired by. So yeah, you'll see here, these are some of my latex pieces. I've imprinted my photographs on the latex mm -hmm. that I actually fabricated myself. Will you explain how you do it? Yeah. Um, so each piece is definitely a different process, um, but I will walk you through this piece here. So what I do is I paint latex in many different layers. So it's usually about 10 layers mm -hmm. that I um, pile on top of each other. And it's a really soothing process. So it's kind of like, you know, just doodling in your notebook or if you were to like paint on a blank canvas, I get that same sort of relaxing feeling from it. And I wait, so I have to be really patient <laughs> in order for the latex to dry. And then, you know, maybe a week or two weeks later, it's the, it's the climax is what I call it, where I actually get to peel the latex back and be surprised by, you know, the imperfections of it and how it turned out. With this one in particular, I used a UV printer mm -hmm. to print a photograph onto the latex. Um, this one here is a porn star Ebony Mystique's breasts that are big, bubbly, and beautiful. And I like to actually touch them because they bounce <laughs> if you touch the latex. <laughs> so then the process continues. So once I actually have my photograph on the latex, what I do is I interact with the ink. Mm. So you'll see on the back, I actually like pressed my body up against it and I scratched and I interact with the piece in a very intimate way so that, um, yeah, it just looks like every single one looks unique and different. Have you been focusing more on the fine art side of things? Um, it's a balance. Like I definitely focus on like my commercial photography practice. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's how I make a living and I really love taking photos. Mm -hmm. But I would say on my days off, it's pretty like full throttle fine art. So I, I found a fine balance. Um, but since I moved to LA, it's definitely like taken a lot more time than it did when I lived in Canada. When an idea or a project comes your way, like how do you know what lane it's gonna go in? Of the materials, the photography? Well, it depends. So if we're talking fine art, 
Um, it's definitely like a process that I experience by myself in this room. So sometimes I'll draw pictures or I'll print photographs that I've taken and yeah, and just like look at them and see how they interact with the latex I've made. I very much like compartmentalize things mm -hmm. in my head, uh, both artistically mm -hmm. and like emotionally. Uh, I like to kind of create little themes. So, you know, right now I'm really fascinated by drag queens. So I have been photographing them a lot. And then my last show was very much about like sexuality and fetish. Mm -hmm. So I kind of sit with themes for a long time and really like see, you know, how other people feel about what I'm talking about. So a lot of the time I'll have conversations with friends or bring people into my studio and just see, you know, what they have to say about the subject matter. But yeah, it depends on what I'm working on. Will you expand on the themes in your work? The themes, I'd say the common themes of my work is self-expression and like authenticity. A lot of the time expressed through fashion, mm -hmm. uh, since I have been shooting fashion for a really long time. Gender identity and gender fluidity is a big theme in my work. Sex positivity is important to me. A big part of my fascination with latex is the history of latex, where it comes mm -hmm. from, and also the fetish of rubber. And latex fetish began with the Macintosh jacket in London in like the early 50s. And I actually have this latex jacket that I love wearing because it makes me feel like so safe, so secure, so confident. Um, and it's actually a Canadian designer named Eating Flat Feathers. So this is the jacket, right? Yeah. And after I've been working with latex for a long time, I'm like, oh my God, I need to make like a wearable piece because fashion is such a big part of my work and you know how I express myself. So I'm actually collaborating with the designer and I don't know what form the jacket will take exactly, but we're gonna have my photographs like imprinted in the jacket that sort of resembles a Macintosh jacket. I, did, I used it for a photo shoot and I remember having to get lube. Yes. Lube going. Yep. It's a big part of it. Yeah, you have yeah. to like, first you have to put like talcum powder or baby powder. Yeah, yeah. And then you put it on and then you lube it up. I have a bunch of lube, but we won't get into that right now. Um, but how does it feel? It does feel really good. This I is know. really, this is quite shocking. You just took the words out of my mouth because I was going to say, you know what? Yeah. You look good. Yeah, I'm into, I'm into it. When people aren't familiar with latex or latex fetish, there's a lot of misconceptions mm -hmm. about it and there's a lot of judgments about it. Like, you know, some people are intimidated or think it's like this scary, like, you know, world, like at sex clubs and stuff. But actually latex is like a very, very like safe, beautiful fabric that a lot of people do not want to have sex when they're wearing latex or necessarily feel sexy, mm -hmm. but it is really about that feeling of like being secure, feeling contained, and yeah, I'm wondering, do you feel that wearing it? Like, do you feel like you have like a second layer of skin or something like yeah, that? Yeah, the smoothness. There's something, a smoothness to it that I wasn't, I wasn't quite expecting. And I think a strength to your point exactly. Yeah, exactly. What do you want art fans and viewers to take away when they see a Maya Fuhr piece? I think when someone sees a Maya Fuhr piece, I want them to feel accepted and I want them to know that it's okay to be the way they are and yeah, to celebrate themselves. Does it make you really happy that the pieces are conversation starters, that they're pushing conversations forward? Yeah, it's the most important thing for me is uh, not only them aesthetically looking good because that's something I focus on when I'm by myself, but when people are around my art, it's so important that it starts conversation, that people feel like they have a safe space to open up about themselves, uh, you know, share about their insecurities, and inevitably like share with each other and connect with each other. Because it's, you know, it's what I love in the world and what I love about photography is that connection I get to, I get to have with people. So if people can feel that from my art, then I have succeeded. With the photography, you're extremely talented, but is there any, tips or tricks to taking that very authentic picture of the person who's sitting for you? If I were to say one trick, which isn't a trick, mm -hmm. it's just being a nice human, is uh, validating them. Mm -hmm. Saying, you look amazing, or, you know, that was a great photo. You know, I love your outfit, I love your hair. It, it's such a simple, simple trick, 
that I've actually noticed like people don't do enough. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for having me here and showing me around, but now we're gonna go shopping at the Gorky because you have a few of your pieces on display. Yeah, let's go. Maya, this is a fantastic place you brought me to. Uh, this is the Gorky, which is a store and a community house where it's a really amazing curation of art and fashion. And there's a lot of uh, local designers and it's owned by a Canadian, which I love. Oh, um, okay. What do you think of this? I like this. Yeah, I love that. That's uh, this girl Jacqueline's brand called Rabot. Mm -hmm. And she's really good at um, capturing like creative women and artists. I've been drawn to this since mm. I walked in. I really love like a unisex moment and also like loose fitting mm -hmm. stuff. Um, so I definitely want to try this on to get like my inner school teacher fantasy <laughs> fulfilled. I would say my personal style is definitely like gender fluid. It depends the day, but sometimes like I wear like really baggy, loose stuff, and then other days I'm like feel like I'm in full drag with like blue eyeliner and like fancy dresses. So it really depends my mood, uh, and it's all over the place. I don't think I have like one word to describe my fashion. So we're in Silver Lake, and you don't live too far. Yeah. What drew you to the east side of LA? Well, when I first came to LA, one of the neighborhoods I fell in love with was Echo Park, which is just beside here. And the reason I love it is because it's very young and it's very walkable, mm -hmm. which is really rare for LA. And the neighborhood surrounds Echo Park Lake, which is really important to me be to be by nature mm -hmm. because I'm from British Columbia and like being outdoors in nature is the most important thing for me. So just having like a park nearby my neighborhood that I can walk around is like a huge perk of living around here. So can you rewind a little bit about your nonprofit? Because yes. I'm hearing this for the first time. Okay, yeah. So what did you create? About eight months ago, I founded a nonprofit called Clay DD. We celebrate like every kind of different person and in their individuality. So we work with kids that have special needs, or people that have mental health struggles. Mm -hmm. And we really uh, show them that it's okay to feel how they feel and that they can actually express themselves through creativity mm -hmm. and working with terracotta clay, which is this color, and meditation and mindfulness. So it's a big part of my life here. And I feel like I need to try this on because this is the color we work with. Well, this here is one of my pieces that I have up. Mm -hmm. uh, it's for all my horse girls out there, which I know there's a lot of them. <laughs> and for me, horses represent strength. And in the fetish community, uh, pony play is all about care and like really caring for your partner. So it was like a fascination I had for a while. Mm -hmm. um, so this is kind of like a little peep show into that like pony play life. Yeah. yeah, I just love the colors and the texture of the latex and uh, the intimacy of mm -hmm. that piece. Uh, and then this is my friend Julia's pregnant belly and I'm just like so in awe by pregnancy mm -hmm. and like I really want to have a kid myself so. That's beautiful. I just, I just love bellies. And was this photographed here? This was the cover of Polyester magazine. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a London magazine. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I printed it and then I scratched it and like morphed it afterwards. So these pieces here are a commentary on celebrity culture and how fleeting it can be. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you know who Mia Khalifa is, but she's an ex-porn star, uh, now activist and actor. Mm -hmm. And I photographed her where it looks like she's like stuck behind the glass. The coolest part of this piece is that she ended up like buying back her own image from me because uh, she loved like one of the pieces I made of this and she now owns it in her home. And it's just really cool that like, yeah, I can make a piece and then like also sell it to the person that's in the piece and it like creates this beautiful synergy and like ownership mm -hmm. for the individual. Is the photo underneath or it's on the latex? 
it's on the latex. So I fabricated the latex mm -hmm. myself and then printed the image on top. It was so lovely to spend time with you in your neck of the woods. It's been so fantastic seeing the art space, you introducing me to the Gorky. I can't thank you enough. It was a brilliant day. Thank you so much. I had a lot of fun. I hope to see you soon. Yeah. I'm going to stay here and hang out with Julie. But great. Call me when you're in LA. Yes, yes. We're going for a drink next time. Through conversation and discovery with multi-hyphenate Maya Fuhr, we see that creativity in Los Angeles knows no bounds and where the spirit of art as well as fashion is woven into the fabric of everyday life. The independent culture of neighborhoods like Silver Lake serve as a living canvas for style, art, and self-expression, creating both a community and a state of mind. See you next time on Talking and Shopping.